Hey, welcome to the Shepherd's Rest Doc Talk. This is episode 116. I'm Cam and this is Jilly. This week's Torah portion, we are now on Noah, the second of the new Torah cycle. Yes. And it goes from um, Genesis 6, 9 to the end of chapter 11, which I think is verse 32. So you can look at our 15 A and B and then our 67 or something? 66 or, or 67. It? Oh, okay. It's in the later 60s, A and B. Um, if you'd like to see last year's and the year before, and the Bs will cover um, the Brit Hadashah as well as the Prophets. Right. Um, so we're going to pick up on some things that we haven't talked about before. And I thought we would just jump in. And I'm going to jump in first. And I wanted to look at something in Chapter 9 that I saw that I was like, oh... Cool. Had not seen it quite like that. So okay. in chapter 9, this is when, uh, in verse 11, is where the covenant is being established for the rainbow. It says, I shall establish my covenant with you, and never again is all flesh cut off from the waters of the flood. Never again is there a flood to destroy the earth. And Elohim said, This is a sign of my covenant which I make between me and you and every living thing that is of you from uh, for all generations to come. All right, and then in 13 it says, I shall put, excuse me, I shall set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be for a sign of a covenant between me and the earth, okay? And it shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud. 15, and I shall remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living being and all flesh, and never again let the waters become a flood to destroy all flesh. All right. And then 16 goes on a little bit more about the cloud. But here was what I saw. So the covenant itself is actually, the sign of the covenant, I should say, is actually not just for us to remember, but it's also to call the Lord to remembrance. Yes. To remember that he's not going to destroy it by right, by um, water. All right. Who now uses that sign? I was just going to say, oh my gosh, that's so funny. I was just, that's what I was laughing at. Yeah. I was just about to say something about that. So, so I thought, oh my gosh, of course they would take that. Because this is a sign of going, no matter how we act, look, you said you weren't going to destroy, destroy us. us. Yeah. Now, of course, it's the enemy who said, here's the sign you're going to use. Okay. Right. That's right. where the right. idea really came from. Because it is literally mocking in the face of God. You are a God of your word. It's you the said you won't of Romans 1. You won't right. You won't destroy us. Mm -hmm. So we do whatever we want. We're just going to show you our sign to remind you why you can't. So Romans 1 is the uh 123 and down is where it talks about man's perversion as we pervert who he is. He allows our perversion to come upon us right. and let us go the way in which our desire takes us, which is the way in which the enemy is leading us. Um so the yeah. And I would say that that sign being allowed by him mm -hmm. to be that way to remind him constantly that there is a remnant out there. That's why he won't destroy the whole earth. Right. Again. Yes. There is a remnant out there, even amongst this dark cloud. Absolutely. It's the same idea as Matthew 13, where you have the tares among the wheat. The wheat. He's right. not going to just pull up all the tares yet because it will also pull up the wheat. So he's not going to do it until it's time to shake it all. Right. To shake out the wheat and the tares. He will not allow it to be before that. Um, and another thing about this covenant that I saw is it's with the earth. Yet where's the sign? In the heavens. So again, we have the two witnesses who are involved in this covenant that he's never going to destroy them again. And we see in Revelation 20, before that, they become new, right? But before that judgment at the end, which is going to bring on the time to clean it, heaven and earth, they flee. Yeah. So and my, what, yes. And doesn't it say his throne is? It's got the rainbow all the way around it. Yes, it does. It says so the bow, our even, covenant, which is also the bow. So his covenant is before him all the time. Yes. Ooh, yeah. You know, which so a rainbow? If you, I don't know if you know this. It's actually not a half. It's always a full circle. We can only see a half of it. Oh, okay. So because the ground gets in the earth gets in the way. Yeah. So the heavens has half and the earth has half. Yes, that's what I was gonna say. Oh so no, yeah. Sorry. The thing is is you have both of them involved in 
showing the sign of the covenant and reminding us what the sign of the covenant is because the rains fell from the heavens and from the earth. Both were involved in that destruction. Well, when there's a fire at the end, both will be involved in that renewing yes. with fire, the heavens and the earth and both. I just think it's kind of neat the way the way it's put in there like that for us to see. It's with, with everything, but also that it's in verse 15, something for him to remember. Yeah. And how the enemy looking at it today is totally put it in his face. I bet if we started to look at that pattern, we would see that in a lot of other places. Right. And I would say that the this destruction of the earth is our physical representation of what will eventually happen spiritually with the fire. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, we have a mini... Or a mini example, and that's with um, Simon Gomorrah. Yeah. You know, there's the mini fire. Remember, that's, we'll talk about that later, but that's one of the reasons why they thought there's no one left on earth. Yeah. Because they knew the second <clears throat> one's coming with fire. Right. So they're like, right. that was it. Right. But anyway, okay, now let's jump in and look at a little bit about Noah. I wanted to start at verse, uh, chapter 5, verses 29, and this is where Lamech is naming, giving a little speech before he's naming uh Noah. It says, and the Lord, excuse me, and he called his name Noah, saying, This one does comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. All right. Um, Rabbi Foreman has this great thing. It's where he takes the wording. Plow. Yeah, he takes the wording. It's actually Rambam's theory about a plow. I don't know if I really agree with any of that. Interesting. It's where he takes these words and then the Lord uses the same words in Genesis 6 when he's talking about destroying the earth. Mm -hmm. So my thought driving um, was, wait a minute, while I'm not debunking Rambam's idea, it's interesting, but I thought, what do we know? We know that the Lord reveals to his friends, right? Mm -hmm. Well, who's to say he didn't reveal it to Noah, I mean, uh, not Noah, but Lamech, or to Enoch, yeah. who shared it with Lamech, right? who now knows this is going to be the one. So then I thought, maybe it's actually the reversal. The Lord was, they were given this prophecy, they used it, and now the Lord is showing himself faithful to the prophecy of who Noah was going to be. And then after that, it suggests um, that Noah was 500 when he had these children, the three that went with him. Of course, that's only once the children who were going to be um, preserved with him were named. But that doesn't mean that those are all the children he had. I don't know if we said that before or not, but Noah helped populate the earth. He was obedient right. in doing so. That means... He had 500 years worth of kids that drowned with the rest of mankind. And yeah. is it drowned or drowned? It's drowned. Drowned. <laughs> I, I caught that in the English buffs. I caught that. Drowned um, with all the other believer, or non believers. And, you know, that had to be heart, heart wrenching for him because as whatever's happening, the screams or whatever he's hearing, when that door closes, he realizes he only has this, the last born. Yeah. Of his three who are actually with him. So when we look in six, um, six, uh, excuse me, eight and nine, it says, But Noah found favor in the eyes of Yovay. That's the merciful one. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with Elohim. Now, of course, we had Enoch who walked with them. Mm -hmm. We have Noah. So I've heard discussions that, well, Noah wasn't really that righteous. It was just that he was righteous compared to everybody else in right, corruption. Right. But, you know, we have the different, we have Adam and Eve in their pure generation. Corruption happened. Right. We have um, Noah and his corruption happened. As you go down, the corruption keeps getting, you know, more and more. But you still have a righteous one in them. The Lord still is providing that one to make sure that there's a leader for the remnant. Right. right. So then I start thinking, okay, if Adam acted as a high priest, Enoch acted as a priest. Noah, as we know um, in the Brit Shah, he's seen as a preacher who's preaching about the Lord. And in chapter 7, he's being invited to come into this ark in which he built, kind of going back to the temple idea. You know, here there's a traveling temple that the Lord's going to be inside, kind of the Holy of Holies idea. He's uh -huh. going to let him be in there, okay? Then we have this this window we talked about last year, this light, the window, which can also be a stone, a, a stone that glows, a light, okay? Right. Now, we're not saying it's not a window. There is a window there. Yeah. But, you know, they have these double meanings often. So here's the Lord, that light, that that presence in there with them, okay? And then we see when he comes out, the first thing he does is acts just like a priest. And when he comes off the ark, the first thing he does 
is he sets up sacrifice, okay, an offering. This offering is of all the clean things. We've mm -hmm. talked about that before. Um, so he's he's doing this, and the Lord says it's a sweet fragrance to him, right? Because because again, it's obedience. And if we think about this, when you have a covenant, it's the cutting, right? You cut something, okay, and then you both share it. It's a meal. Right. So that would mean that right here, Noah is having giving an offering, okay, and in this, when the Lord's going to make a covenant, there's got to be a meal eaten. Which doesn't make sense why in 9, he's like, hey, you can eat anything. Of course, mm -hmm. we know that that anything isn't anything. It's right. clean. Okay. So, if Noah, you know, as I don't remember who said it, there was just uh, the thought of it being a hiatus, just a, a short time. When you go on to the ark, don't eat the animals. Don't eat the clean animals. You need to not eat them. Right. But then afterwards, that little hiatus is now relieved. Okay. It's, it's been allowed to now eat again so they can have a covenant. I wanted to say something like in three, it says every, you can have every creeping creature that lives is food for you. I have given you all as I gave the green plants. Right. And I thought it's the pattern of the way he gave all of the plants. He said, it's all good for you except for this. Uh -huh. Here he's saying all the ones that bear all the, clean fruit, ones. all the clean ones are good for you except for this. I'm sure that's the pattern in which this was set up. Okay, one more really cool thing that I saw. I mean, I, I wanted to say something about Abraham. Um, I'll throw that out real quick. It is believed by many Midrash that Sarah is actually Abraham's niece. Uh -huh. It's the daughter of the one that died in the fire. fire. Um, and that he and his brother both took on one of the sisters, Milka and Sarah. But Sarah has a different name. I don't remember what it was. Anyway. Um, and Sarai? <laughs> before that. <laughs> yes, that was it. They weren't even before that. But I can't say it right now. Okay. So, anyway, the thought is that um, they married into their brother's family to allow the name of the brother to be preserved on forever. Just thought it was a cool idea. Cool. What I wanted to show you real quick that I saw, no idea, just throwing it out there, is in um, 9.22, it's when um, Ham has seen what's happened with the the his dad. No, it says, and Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his brothers outside. And when I read that, I was like, wait a minute. Because in 4... Genesis 4, 8, we have Cain told Habel, or Cain told Abel, his brother. We have the same thing, where something's happened, and they go and they tell their brothers. And then, well, Sean, hurrah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what kind? I never thought about that. <laughs> yeah. Evil speech. Well, what happens? Once they tell it, then this, like, life pivotal curse comes. Mm -hmm. It right. happened. Then Cain killed Abel, and then he was cursed from the ground. And he had to wander. Yeah. He had to be without that um, stability, which we know that's not what he did. Okay. Um, <laughs> but then we have here the same thing where we have um, the sin of what happened with Cain. But again, his people are cursed. And not only is he going to be servants, but the travel or the road to get to servanthood. I mean, we talked about this before. All the Nephilim seem to come through there. You got just, you have Nimrod, you have all these things coming through this line. That are not good. And at the time that Moses wrote the Torah, mm -hmm. it's the Lord really wanted them to remember that Cain came from this line. He says over oh, and yeah. over and over again, you know, anytime you mean Cain, you mean Canaan. Canaan. Yeah, sorry. The Canaan. Canaan. Yeah. That Canaan came from Ham. Right. Because anytime Ham's mentioned, it's like, and he was the father of Canaan. Right. Oh, and Ham, the father of Canaan. Yeah. You know, like he really wants you to know, well, this group came from that and this is where it started. Right. And you know what I love about that is because in the end, when they do end up coming back into the tent as servants, uh -huh. and this is the son of Ham, who you thought had no hope, the one that seemed the most hopeless, yeah. are going to still be able to be brought in as servants. As servants. And when you understand what a servant looks like from Exodus 20, right. That's one, not a bad thing. it's like, wow. Wow. <laughs> because remember, this the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's go back. The God of Noah. Uh -huh. Okay? Yeah. He's a God that won a relationship. The other ancient religions had gods that they served because those gods demanded it. 
Right. Our God demands it so we can be in relationship. Right. It's a whole different thing. I mean, they couldn't even understand that. No wonder Israel was to be set apart to look so different because while things look the same when you do a historical study, it's like, oh, they all had the temple. Oh, they all had those things. No, no. Israel had a loving, compassionate, intimate God. No one else had that. Right. So anyway, and we see that in this story where he's like, look, I'm going to preserve these, this remnant, right. and bring them through. Yeah. So there's a whole bunch more I could chat on, but Julie's got some really good stuff that I want to hear. Okay, well, let me think about that for okay. a second. No. All right, so here's where my studies Study took me. Okay. We're going to end up in Jeremiah. Okay. And it's yeah, kind I was of in Isaiah, but it's I didn't kind go there. of a little message for us today. Okay. That's how I felt when I got into it. I was like, this is a message for us right now that we need to know. Okay. Okay. All right, so it. Stemmed off of Genesis eight twenty one, starting at 21, it says, And Yahweh smelled a soothing fragrance, oh and Yahweh said in his heart, Never again shall I curse the ground because of man, although the inclination of man's heart is evil from his youth, and never again strike all living creatures as I have done. So, when I was listening to Aleph Bait this morning, they talked about how after the flood, the Lord seems to be more lenient because mm. no longer is it punishment and I'll destroy all mankind if they go astray. It's kind of a, a separation, a letting go. The long suffering. A letting man. go of man. And I thought about that. I really pondered on that. I was like, I don't understand. And then the Lord really started showing me kind of like um, a father to the kids or okay. the parent to the child. Okay. You're constantly punishing them. And it's not a punishment that's the problem. The problem is they keep behaving in a certain way that that's warrants right. the punishment. Right. So a parent eventually has to get to a point in the child's life where they let them go. Right. And let them for everyone's sanity. For everyone's sanity. And so they can experience life and understand why the punishments came. In other words, let them go out and experience those things right. in hopes that they will come around and see it the correct way. Well, okay. You know? So, um, 1 Corinthians 5, that's the whole point. Let right. them go out. Right. Right. So they'll so come back. So here we see, you know, we talked a lot about the, the Lord separates in mm -hmm. order to bring back together. Yeah. Right? So he's deliberately separating himself from that. Right. So eventually oh, they can all together. come back together. I like right? that. Yeah. So I started seeing that separation through the whole thing. Okay. Right. Okay. So he brought the waters that he originally separated right. back together, mm -hmm. but then he separated them again and dry land came right. back again after Noah. You know, right. I just started seeing the separation that I thought, Oh my gosh. Uh, so I saw it later on in the story with, when everyone was of one language, then right. he separated them all mm -hmm. out in order to eventually, eventually bring them all back together. Right. Because he knows divided in that way, it, there's more likely that they can have overcomers. Yes. So then I thought about the churches, the seven churches. Oh, you know, you have all the churches, the different churches, mm -hmm. not united, but so there was going to be overcomers in each one right, right. in order to unite us at the end. Right. But... Overcomers in, unite. Yes. But in our capacity here on earth, uh -huh. we're just going to pervert it. We always right. do. Right. It's like with Judaism. They perverted it. Yeshua came, scattered everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it was perverted. Uh, now the church different, perverted. Right, right. It's just this big pattern. Right. right. So with all of that in mind, mm -hmm. as I kept reading and I got to the part where he was drunk. Mm -hmm. All right. When Noah was drunk. And I was like, I want to look up that word drunk. Okay. And that's how I ended up in Jeremiah. Okay. Because there are times where the Lord uses drunk in a negative way and in a positive way. Okay. And they do it and he does it. Drunk is always in a negative way. But what I mean is um, he's going to make them drunk and then this positive thing is going to come about. Got you, got you, it, got you. Right? Right. All right. So I ended up in Jeremiah 51 and he's talking about Babylon in a female sense. Oh, so okay. I saw it completely harlot? different. I was like, "This, it's the harlot. Yeah. And we can make those connections, but as I started reading, I was like, oh, wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Let's start in 51.1. It says, Thus says Yahweh, See, I am stirring up the spirit of a destroyer against Babel, against those who dwell in um, Leb, my opponents. Now, we know in Revelation that the Antichrist, the beast, mm -hmm. allows 
the harlot to ride on him, and then right. he turns on her. Right. Right? So I believe that's what this is speaking of. Okay. But listen to two, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is amazing. It says, and I shall send winnowers to Babel, who shall winnow her and empty her land, for they shall be against her all around in the day of evil. And I thought, light bulb came on. Okay, okay. so we know in the harvest, uh -huh. the barley harvest, the winnowing right. is the most gentle. Right. And they're, they they take the, the barley in its original form, mm -hmm. and they winnow it to get the shaft off. Right. Right? So I thought, It's kind of like this, and it's shaking. Wake up. Yeah. Wake up. Right. That's so I thought... So it was like the Lord said, this is where you're at. This is where we're at right now. Uh -huh. Babylon the whore. See, our job is not to winnow people. Our job is to winnow the doctrine. Yeah. Because yeah. the barley... Which actually, Ephesian, uh, the church of uh, Phisha, or Ephesus, Ephesus yes. did, yeah. They did? Yeah, that's what they're commended for, was keeping the doctrine pure. Oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry. When, when we, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sorry. So, so my thought was, oh my goodness, so our, so let's think about that. So barley is in its original form, and it's the, it's what's at the first. Right. So I thought Torah, mm -hmm. you know, it's it hasn't been ground into flour and baked into a right. cake and served. Right. It's in its original first fruit form. Right. All right, so let's think about right now. Okay. There are people all over spiritual Babylon okay. all over the church starting to find Torah yeah. and they're sifting through it and they're winnowing because right? it's so easy he too. Sending, like, oh. he's sending people to her that's what really yeah. caught my attention I'm sending people to Babylon and I thought about so many thoughts that we've had yeah. about he's going to send us back into in order to take Go out. out he's right. got to separate in order to bring it back so we can separate again. Right. You know? So so we're more efficient at yeah. doing what we need to do, which is to winnow. Because that's what these people's job is to do, is to winnow the barley, which that is what w nourishes us. That's right. what feeds us. So I think of that as Torah, because yeah. it's in its original form. In the first form, it hasn't turned to wheat yet. It's still in the barley. And it's a very easy thing that's going on it's right now. It's just pricking those hearts. Are those hearts that are already yes. pricked are ready? Right. Just for this stuff to fall off. Yes, and that's. But see, the thing is, that's our job. Right. Our job is to sift through that and present it the correct way. And back to the pulling apart. So if we, like we talked about last week, to be pulled out in order to exist, to yes. have a purpose, right. to then go back in to the hole and function. Right. So the same thing. We're pulled out. Right. Yes. For whatever job. Right. 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 All right. So then, um, this is all about her demise. So if you kept, if you read in 51, she's going to fall. But here's another thing interesting I saw. It says in 5, For neither Israel nor Judah is widowed by his Elohim. Now we know the northern kingdom was divorced. Right. This isn't physical. Right. This is spiritual. That's and this is widow. now. Yeah. Okay. So you have spiritual Israel, but you also have Judah in the physical sense here on earth. Right. So it says neither one of them are widowed, Yahweh of hosts, by his by his Elohim, Yahweh of hosts, through their land has been filled with sin against the set-apart one of Israel. So I thought about Yeshua. Both sides of the fence have sinned against Yeshua. Absolutely. This one doesn't accept the written Torah. This one doesn't accept the living Torah. Right. Both of them are guilty. Right. Then in 6 it says, flee from the midst of Babel. All right, so now he's saying, now get out. Yeah. So... I don't know. Well, I now saw, your eyes have been opened. You can't stay there. Right. I mean, right. you and only you that, were you sent can't. there to winnow. Right. And when yeah. you winnow and you got the barley, now it's time to hightail right. it out. And it says, and let each one save his life. In Torah life? Yes. Yes. Do not be cut off in her crookedness, for this is the time of the vengeance of Yahweh, the recompense he is repaying her. And I, I thought... I really thought on this, and I felt like the Lord was saying, we're in the winnowing phase of this. There's going to be a time where he's going to be like, okay, now everybody oh, yeah. out. Right. You everybody know, out. When you read that about the um, don't be caught in her. Yeah. She's and going I, to be cut off. Right. And I thought, you know, uh, Matthew, uh, the end of Matthew 24, which is the servants, and the one servant who's wicked, meaning he wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing. Right. He is told he's going to go through the same hypocrisy that the others go through. Just right. like the five virgins. Mm -hmm. I'm told, that's fine, but you're going to have to go through the same thing that everyone else is going through. Right. Again, this right. warning, 
don't get stuck in there. Yeah. I've yeah. given you a way out. Take it. Right. And it so makes you can be think, counted worthy. Yes. It makes me think of Revelation to the Church of Philadelphia. He says, I am putting before you an open door. Yes. Yeah. Get in. Get out. Go right. get go through the door. Right. Yeah. You know, when that door and then the next and church. No one can close it, no one can open it. That's right. And then you see the next church where he's standing at the door knocking. Mm -hmm. Those last few come out. Come out of yeah. her. You know? Yeah. And anyway, that's what I saw. You can read the rest of um 51, it really coincides with Revelation 17, with the whore and how she's destroyed. But this gives us kind of an insight to what leads up to that yeah. event, which I really enjoyed seeing this week. And I really felt a real drawing towards the winnowing, you know, him showing me that's the, that's the beginning of bread. That's the, that's, that's where you start. Right. You yeah. know, the barley is where it that's starts. That's the, I mean, each has a first fruits. Yes. Of each, but that's the, the first, first of, the, of the, first. the first. Right. That's where Yeshua is. And it made, yeah, right. Which is right. why he's that he's first, that fruit. first fruit. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, that I'm sending you to her to winnow yeah. really caught my attention thinking, that's exactly what's happening right yeah. now. It's the gentleness. Are, and thank God, because later, you know, it's going to become that crushing. And then, well, it's going to be the slapping around. Right. And then it becomes the crushing with the last one. Right. Yeah. No. Let's, let's, let's avoid that one. So anyway, let's be diligent at our winnowing job. Yes. And um, join us each week, because that's what we plan on doing. Taking each tour portion Winnowing what we can, <laughs> yeah, and presenting uh, food, <laughs> food for thought. <laughs> so dine with us <laughs> once a week for every tour portion. <laughs> we hope your bellies get full. <laughs> I should. Say I know get mine filled, is. Whatever. <laughs> all right. Anyway, but one last thing, I wanted to say, isn't it funny that you see all of these diseases today that are hooked with bread? You oh, know, yeah, because like the, celiac disease yeah. and, you know, all of these different conditions that because they can't tolerate bread. And I thought because it's been polluted because it's been polluted. Right. That's exactly what I thought about this. We have to go to the first stage. Yeah. And then we know that first. We can't get it at the end when it's made into a cake. Right. Right. It's already and the it's damage is done. Yeah. The damage has been done. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Anyway, that was my thought. Well, that's it for this week. We thank you for joining us and we hope you have a fantastic week. Shalom. Shalom.